Hi right, guys, I'm bored and and fidgety, and several people have sent me this link. So let's let's get on in with another standard, albeit rather long, candle. If you're asking yourself why you should listen to a straight white guy mansplain feminism to you, odds are you're already sold on the idea. Why, well, yes, that is a punchy yet accurate description of what feminism is about. Racist, sexist, totalitarian language policing. And it has precisely bugger all the things to do with the quality. This video probably isn't for you. It's for my fellow straight white guys. Nazi, eh? Well, sorry, sir, I'm not into collectivism. Uh, there's, a, there's a kind of thing that leads to identitarian mindsets such as white supremacy. I'm an individual, thank you very much. I don't go in for a... Ah, well then. You smart bastards. Maybe they say things like, I'm not a feminist, I'm an egalitarian. Yeah. Disgusting! <laughs> are, you, are you sure that's the right clip? Were you, were you meant to show uh, an image of the dictionary definition of egalitarianism there? To show that it's no weaker an argument than showing the dictionary definition of feminism? That, that was humongous. I don't get why that... What, I, I think you meant to show that clip later on. Like, to prove that men are disgusting or something. Or they go to commentary channels on YouTube to laugh at ridiculous SJWs. Why did you worse than give you a one star? <laughs> that, that didn't even require a clip, my dude. You are the clip. But just as you don't like being compared to every Tiki Torch guy, these people don't represent all feminists. Okay, I really hope this is the only time I have to tell you this. Feminists are not the equal and opposite entity to straight white men, or even men. They're not even the same category of thing. You do not get to take a modern ideology that people consciously decide to adopt and equivocate it with a genetic type of human that people are born into, okay? Especially in the context of justifying conflict between them. <laughs> like, you keep, you keep saying these unflattering generalizations about Scientologists, therefore I get to say the same things about bisexual Polynesian women. Do you see how that's not an equivalent trade-off there? You, you, <laughs> you don't like Jews? I don't like Nazis. How are we any different? I love the, oh, you don't like my method of hacking at your face with a chain. Well, I don't like your chromosomes. <laughs> come see, come see. All right, <laughs> that was you trying your best to be fair and balanced and moderate, but you already sound like a crazy person because you failed to recognize the important difference between a kind of humanity and a kind of dogma. Evidently, your dogma is as important to you or more than your own humanity. And that is not moderate, sir. That is about as extreme as an ideology can possibly get. So pardon me. If I take your advice with a pinch of salt and a sprinkling of black pepper and I shove it up the arse of a five bird roast until it starts marbling out of its orifice like a delicious, delicious guano. So I might as well look the part. There are no scientific papers I can hold up that flat out say toxic masculinity exists. Right, well, you've got the look down to a T, but your attitude is all wrong. No self-respecting feminist would be caught dead admitting that there is anything false or unscientific about feminism or its tenets. I'll take you through a story. It's really quite simple. When you are wrong, lie. The end. You give it a go. But no study ever comes to a definitive conclusion. Atta boy. Yeah, no, sometimes studies do reach a definitive conclusion. In actual science departments, for instance. That's why the device you're using to watch this video will turn on and work perfectly almost every time because those boffins in the STEM fields can produce answers that are definitive to like 50 decimal places, my dude. And maybe more women would go into STEM if they weren't being so distracted by this evangelical racket we call gender studies passing itself off as a subcategory of science. Food for thought, eh? I don't know, fucking astronaut nutrient paste for thought. Instead, they study some tangential aspect of a problem and leave it to us to infer the rest. Yeah, they point the finger and you make up lies. It's not science. It's not journalism. It's not even reporting. It's just hysteria. Barely contained hysteria that reproduces itself. It's a system as old as the hills, and in my opinion, it should have stayed on the hills with the rest of the jackals. 
Let's start with white privilege. Like many of you, I immediately get defensive whenever someone says I'm privileged. I certainly don't feel privileged. Oh, job done. Your feelings are your truth, sir. Therefore, it is the truth. Unless you're a straight white male, of course, then you're just culturally appropriating. But that's not a problem either. You say, all you have to do is feel like a non-binary Somalian hermaphrodite. Who is anyone to tell you you're not? Does anyone have the authority to tell straight white men what they are? Yes, straight white women. <laughs> Weird, I don't know, but it feels like science to me. I don't get a break on my taxes, a check from the government, or a discount at Walmart simply because I'm white. Or get paid more for the same job. Thankfully, I'm white, and I have a white-sounding name. Good lad. You're, you're really getting the hang of this whole, I'm not saying this, but this. Sometimes all it takes to have your resume tossed in the trash is having an ethnic-sounding name. Is your name... Cletus? Is your name Abner? Is your name Billy Bob Bob Junior Bob? And are you comparing the Luquatias and the Tsinchas and the Slaniks? of the world with the Cletuses of the world. I'll explain it using these two equally not racist skits, shall I? Am I? Cletus. Cleophus. Midnight equal head. Oh, down, Isha. Adam Ball. Ma, get off the damn roof. I'm starting to run out of teeth, y'all. Trailer track, Sheila. Sarah Pilon. It's Alexa. That's my cousin. <laughs> Famara. My other cousin. Eloquist. She lives down the way. Over there. <laughs> Simbalta. She's trouble, but she's fun. <laughs> Allegra. Now, she does my hair, and she don't have a shop, so I go to her house, where she has a little baby named Lil Nicorette. <laughs> See, I really hope you weren't comparing the Luquatias and the Tsinchas and the Slaniks with the Johns and the Susans, and indeed the Lakshmis and the Pings of the world, because that would be not just despicably dishonest, but also embarrassingly lazy. It would give the impression that you're just misleading minorities into a state of learned helplessness while you reserve all the confidence for your fellow white males. Because that would be a sick, stupid thing to do, regardless of whatever the hell your intentions are. Thankfully, I'm white. That is, that is absolutely something that white supremacists say, by the way. I know you think you're opposing them, but you, 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 you're not. You're, you fundamentally believe the same things as them. You're just somehow even stupider. If I were in an emergency situation like a burning building and a woman stands up and says we should all go out that door, but then a man stands up and says no, we should all go out that door, I'm probably going to listen to the man. Well, in that situation, you'd be looking for an exit that, that isn't you know, covered in fire. So the right person to listen to would, for instance, be someone who just ran into the burning building rather than someone trying to run out of it, because the person running into it must have located a safe threshold in order to do so. And the day a woman is ever expected by social pressure to run into a burning building to save someone else is the very day this conundrum of yours will be in any way confusing. It stands to reason, does it not, that if men are the ones expected and pressured to take responsibility then people are going to, at the very least instinctively, expect men to save them. Does that make me a sexist? Maybe. But the fact that I recognize this male privilege and recognize that it's a problem is a step in the right direction. We already expect more from men. We already expect better from men than we expect from women. And that is why we expect it. You hold men to higher standards, and so you hold men to higher standards, and then you wonder how the hell you wound up holding men to higher standards. If it's a problem, then don't bloody do it. But if you're going to spend 40 minutes telling us we need to expect even more from men and only men, that the solution is to hold men to a higher standard than we hold women. Like this is some kind of sudden progressive breakthrough out of left field, then I think I'm going to get quite frustrated with you. How many times have I been that guy? How many times have people just accepted my authority or even my opinions simply because I'm a man and not because I was correct? Well, yourself hardly ever. Uh, you don't have the, uh, the deep 
dulcet tones that people look for in in a, in a pilot or other authority figure. You have a certain childlike demeanor. I'm not having a go, but it's just how it is. And it's mainly adults that we need when predicaments get serious. People who resemble adults. And that does necessarily mean the large ones. Sorry. Well, but, well all, <laughs> I'm saying sorry. To reiterate, it's not necessarily a privilege to be put in a position of responsibility that you didn't want or consent to. I'm fairly tall and I have a fairly deep voice, but I have no idea how to escape this burning building. The last thing I need is someone else asking me that which I do not know. Because then I've got two lives on my hands and twice as much stress. See? Hypotheticals can be blunt and blurry, but they mustn't be incomplete. My goal with this video is not to completely sell you on feminism and social justice. In all truth, that's probably not possible. No, no, no it, is, it is perfectly possible. If you rope them in real young. Like, while their head's still soft and it hasn't fused together yet. They'll believe anything you tell them. If you've missed the boat by age 12, you'll never get it through. But I suspect you guys know that already. Maybe you're down here in your level of understanding, while someone who has studied it for years and has made a career out of it is up here. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't say shit, man. It's, it's him talking, not me. You don't want to be up here, nor could I get you there. I could. There's 233 videos in this playlist now. It's had half a million views. But to, to be fair, he's absolutely right. You don't want to be here. What well, a fuck shit stack, 233. Fuck, sorry. Social justice warriors don't want to destroy the world as you know it. Or even video games. They just want to make it more equal and inclusive. No, they don't. They want men stripped and pilloried with rotten fruit, and they want women covered up head to toe like Puritan pilgrims going to an everlasting funeral for themselves, both in reality and in the video games into which we thought we could escape. As each day passes, these people are becoming less and less distinguishable from fucking Wahhabis. Just how many rocks do you live under? And I'd remind you that that wasn't always the case. It took us a long time to get here. The fact that you thought that, or didn't even notice that Division 2 characters were dressed the same, is because of people like Anita Sarkeesian and the feminist movement. If you believe that, if you believe that to be true, then you don't get to accuse gamers of punching down when they criticize Anita Sarkeesian, okay? You just admitted that she is personally responsible for this, for imposing Sharia law on the dress codes of digital characters in other people's adult entertainment. She has done far more than Jack Thompson ever did. So you don't, listen to me very fucking carefully, you don't get to act like she's an innocent little dindu who has no power, no influence. It was a brave fucking hero for putting up with swear words on the internet from those big, powerful, unassailable giants of the gaming world. The Joe Blow nobodies who just wanted to play some fucking video games. All right? You absolutely cannot have it both ways. Where Jack Thompson is a bad guy, but somehow Anita Sarkeesian is a good guy. And I strongly suspect the only difference at hand is that one is a man and the other is a woman. And that, my good sir, is not something you can call equal and inclusive. So cut the bullshit and call things what they are, please. It's not equal, it's not inclusive, it's man, bad, woman, weak. To the ends of the fucking earth and beyond, we are sick of this lie. Dispose of it. Feminism, and the left in general, has somewhat of a branding problem. Yes, they, they tend to grossly misbrand themselves as the only non-racist, non-sexists in the room, when in reality they are usually the only racists and sexists in the room. Which is an almost trivial observation. If a person is so up themselves and so convinced of their own moral superiority that they believe they can do no wrong, it's kind of inevitable that they will do whatever the Sam hell they like and still call themselves all the words we have for good things. It's possible for people to say they believe in equality and inclusion when in reality they believe nothing short of the unequal exclusion of people they don't like. But they simply cannot under any circumstances take responsibility for their own hideous thoughts and misguided opinions. Some people are full of shit. Surely you understand this. While they do have the vote, and they do technically have legal equality, for now, you're just gonna have to take my word for it that when it comes to societal power, women have less than men. What's your name? Knowing better. 
Well, thank you so much, Mr. Better. Now I know. <laughs> I feel so educated. I feel so much higher <laughs> in my understanding. Wait, what's the answer to that question? Oh, that, that dude's word for it. That's right. <laughs> I think you should have put this on your other channel, the one called Believing What I Believe. <laughs> this is a 40-minute video, and that still wasn't long enough for you to explain your word for it. So we just have to take it. You must know that this is not an angle that people typically find very convincing. Far from it, it's something of a red flag. It gives the impression, the very strong impression that your beliefs are not justifiable, that you do not spread your ideas by justifying, you, you spread them by insisting on them, which is a hallmark and a dead giveaway of false and unjustifiable information. You are clearly not interested in knowing better or helping anyone else to know better. What you just said there was, please stick a cork in your knowledge. It will not be necessary for this exercise. Dude, like, dude, weak. Seriously. The reason you think women want power over men is because you think we're already here. <laughs> Holy crap, you're one of them mind readers as well, are you? Why didn't you say so? <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, right, right in your channel banner. I am a Vulcan fucking soothsayer. I can tell what you're thinking before I even know you exist. I just hang it up there in big, bold letters so people have an even better idea of what to expect from your fucking sideshow. One red flag deserves another. Do you have any more red flags we should know about? If you want to convince people of your ideas, or bring them over to your side, or even sell them something, you need good branding. Does he know? Does he know he's an ad? And I would argue that social justice does that once you look below the surface. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's shallow at the surface, but underneath that, is shallow all the way through. Genius. It was also linked to the abolitionist and temperance movements, but again, not everybody agreed. Indeed, it, it doesn't matter if 90% of your population doesn't want a law passed. If the remaining 10% are feminists who do want it passed, it will get passed anyway. Because feminists have no power and they just want more. It's <laughs> a bit more. Oh, what? it says here only 10% of the German people agreed with the Nazis. Yeah, but apropos of nothing, obviously. But they soon realized that they weren't being paid the same as men for the same work, and passed the Equal Pay Act of 1963. Good man! You said something true. Expand, please. The act made it illegal to pay people differently for equal work requiring equal skill and responsibility based on sex. Did you hear that, folks? For over half a century now, it has been illegal for employers to do. What feminists claim they are still doing all over the place. They never actually come to a court judge with a piece of paper, the piece of paper everyone gets from their employer to prove they are being paid less for the same job. Never happens. No employer would be stupid enough to commit a crime and then print out the very numbers that prove they committed a crime. Hence, no feminist ever credibly claims it's happened to them, but they are all nevertheless convinced that it has happened to other women. Thousands of other women whom they've never met. Somehow, all the women who have proof of it happening are all just lone wolves. <laughs> Not in contact with any other human beings. It's just sad, really. It's just sad. They're probably all chained up in basements or something. Thank you for telling the truth, my friend. Yes, I am clipping out the lies. I like you better this way. Mr. Better. Women were now allowed to have their own bank accounts and credit cards. Something you would have thought has always been the case. Uh, if you can't even conceive of life before the 20th century when no one had a credit card. Men simply went to work, brought money home, gave it to their wives to decide what to do with it, and repeat every day until he dies from some kind of industrial disease. The only thing that's changed is the, the shrewd inclusion of that big fat petty fucker with the cigar there. Marital rape, which in many states, it was legal to rape your wife until 1993. Leaving aside whatever thin veneer of veracity adorning that statement, sir, would you care to list the states in which it is not a crime for a woman to rape her husband? I'm in one. Nowhere in this nation state is it a crime for a woman to rape any man, let alone her husband. 
So what? I, I see. I could have sworn you very clearly said you were interested in equality, in adjusting the legal rights of the genders so that they match each other. So I presume the point you're making must be that we need to hurry the fuck up and at least consider, maybe, recognizing that women can commit any sexual act at all on any man or any child or anyone at all with no risk whatsoever of a rape charge. That is not equal. That is positively a two-tier caste system you have there. But fuck it. That's just a thing definitely happening in the present. Who cares? You've got some spicy, fucked-up version of the past you'd like to address. And I guess I just have to take your word for it again. You've annoyed me now. I'm glad I have an excuse to ignore as much of you as possible. So every time a men's rights activist or modern anti-feminist complains about how unfair divorce is to men in this country, yeah, feminists wanted to get rid of that. Really? Because I could have sworn you already said... Feminism is not a single monolith. There are several groups within feminism who don't always agree with each other and want different things. So every time a feminist or a modern anti-men's rights activist starts talking to you, you have between two seconds and two minutes before they starkly and bald-facedly contradict themselves, revealing to the world that they are nothing but shysters who will spin on any dime at any given time and impose any principle and then its opposite. Back and forth forever without a care in the world, as long as they get to keep believing that the polysyllabic concoction of fe, me, me, and zim is the one true path and the one true light. You just have to say that word for it. Every time you bring up the Titanic or combat death numbers in order to show some hypocrisy about reverse sexism. What? About reverse sexism. You think you're moderate, don't you? You unironically conceptualize one kind of sexism as forward and the other kind as backward, and you don't think as sexist. <laughs> Again, you'd think you would consider all kinds of sexism to be the same direction, the wrong direction, if you were as into equality as you say you are. I have a pain. Oh lord, I have a pain and it stings. It stings. It's strange to think that MRAs have a lot more in common with second wave feminists than they'd ever be willing to admit. We know of two who are not insane. It's two more than have ever been located in the other two waves combined. Ms. Hoff Summers and Ms. Paglia. They are the only two feminists we know of who want equal responsibilities for women and equal rights. All the other feminists we know of will instead insist quite adamantly in ever more and more legal rights for women and the spinning infinitesimal singularity of but fuck nothing in the way of legal responsibilities for women. See, we react to individual feminists on an individual basis. Somebody reassured us that feminism is not a monolith, you see. And individualism is white supremacy. God damn it, there's a trap in every corridor, you clever, clever cunts. Nobody is denying that men and women are biologically different. I don't know any serious feminist who denies that. Oh well, I'm delighted to be able to enlighten you, sir. It's not correct that there is such a thing as biological sex, and I'm a historian of medicine. I can unpack that for you at great length if you want, but in the interest of time, uh, I won't. We very often find ourselves resorting to taking somebody's word for it, don't we? And as you can see, it's not just fringe lunatics on the internet, it's official university representatives on primetime network television. Although, as you say... I don't know any serious feminist... Yeah, me neither. I, I know of prominent feminists, I know of utterly humorless feminists, I know of asshat fucking crazy feminists, I know of absurdly powerful feminists with a dangerous iron grip on the futures of millions of students and children. But you're quite right, there is not a stray strand of DNA among them that could honestly be called serious. If they're not some scramble-brained prehistoric indo highest like this dude, then it's so willfully ignorant liar like yourself trying to cover up for the other guy. Feminism is not a serious pursuit. It's one very big, very twisted, very labyrinthine, silly place. We are beyond the natural order and primal instincts. Nobody is worried about the neighboring tribe coming over to rape and pillage. You're adorable. 
I, I hope you're truly grateful for the country you live in. Not all feminists are social justice warriors, but pretty much every social justice warrior is a feminist. I didn't know that. I legit didn't know that. Thank you. <laughs> there you go, folks. There is no social justice but gender. And feminism is a message. <laughs> Intersectionality. The idea that different forms of oppression intersect, whether it's sexism, racism, ableism, ageism, or classism. But not reverse sexism or reverse racism or anything we call a reverseism. None of that is on this wheel. Those people don't belong in our inclusivity. <laughs> We're thinking of removing the Jews too. Ah, they're just too Islamophobic. Modern feminism is far more inclusive. Men can be feminists, queer people, and even trans people can be feminists. And no one is a men's rights advocate. That's just a code word for misogynist. Everyone knows that. Down with this sort of thing, everyone knows. Though there are the occasional exclusionary radical feminists. What is a MERF? Why have you never heard of a male excluding radical feminist? Because excluding males is not radical feminism. It's just feminism. But men do have more power in our society, biologically, that's not society, socially, that is society, and legally, even though on paper women have the same legal rights as men, that is legal, that's what legally, <clears throat> look what happens when a woman tries to take legal power. Oh for fuck's sake dude, <laughs> you mean look what happens when the worst presidential candidate in history goes up against the second worst presidential candidate in history. The smart money wins it, is what happens. Say what you want about her policies, but a lot of the arguments I heard about her during that election were specific to her being a female. Yeah, it's like, I want a female president. The end. <laughs> like, I want a female president just because she's female. And that was one of her policies, dickhead. Holy shit, you suck. This is what happens to women who try to break the FBI! Some gender roles are rooted in biology. Men are obviously better suited for hunting and combat, while women are better biologically equipped for child rearing. Do you, do you think that might affect their career choices in any way? Might it follow that it is therefore biologically normal for women to work slightly fewer hours than men? <laughs> what am I thinking? That was more than two minutes ago. But what about stuff like cooking and cleaning? Or yard work? What even is yard work aside from cleaning, but outside? Okay, you're right on top of it, dude. Now concentrate. Why is one male but the other female? One involves pushing a machine that has a spinning thing that sucks stuff up from the ground and puts it in a bag. And the other is vacuuming. You, 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 you got your cute little stand-up routine going on here, and stay with it, you're staring the answer right in the face. What is raking aside from sweeping, but outside? Why is a man better suited for one, but not the other? It's because... It is... Safer... Indoors. I mean, should I have to explain this any further? Women go where it's safe, men go where it is less... Safe, because we care considerably more about women's safety than about men's. I realize this is difficult for you because you believe in that whole patriarchy thing, but what you've just described there, in some detail, is yet another piece of evidence that our society, and just about every bloody society ever, blatantly cares more about women's well-being than men's. Which is fine, but it utterly fucks your patriarchy theory. I mean, woe betide if you start asking yourself if the same applies in Islamic countries, where women aren't allowed outside. It's not as though women would ever choose that for themselves. It's not like it's not like it's the woman's idea that the man should take the trash out. Heavens no, the man insists on taking the trash out. He enjoys it. He loves the freedom of hearing those bullets whoosh supersonically past his face. Uh-oh, the whole system's breaking down. Even the so-called anti-feminists are booing at me now. Abort, abort, abandoned shit. I personally hate yard work, a traditionally male role. And I enjoy cooking, a traditionally female role. Does that make me less of a man? Not in my opinion, but if you are not putting your every waking ounce of attention into making the world a safer place for women, then I'm afraid so, my dear, yes. A real man, as far as the popular narrative goes, does not look out for himself. He looks out for the others, namely women and children, if they're allowed. That is what most people believe. So you can expect many, many people, men and women alike, to disavow you and cast you out of the caste we call real men if 
you don't do yard work when she tells you to. Or indeed, if you use her kitchen without her permission, but we won't get into that. This is so fucking long, dude. I'm gonna have to bail soon. When you have to prove your masculinity through intimidation or putting others down, that's toxic. Amen, brother. So you don't have to call yourself what anyone else tells you to call yourself. Not even the dictionary, right? It's specifically the need to prove your masculinity through intimidation or aggression. Agreed. So you don't have to toe the ideological line that you are quite aggressively shamed and intimidated into towing. You don't have to bow to feminism. I'm picturing a universe where we're getting somewhere. So when Gillette released that ad, they weren't denigrating all men, they weren't trying to make you less masculine, they were trying to make you better men. Okay, never mind. Sir, you don't have to listen to me, but I'm going to say it anyway. Men do not need to be better, and women do not need to be stronger, because, and here's the part that's going to forever hide behind your blind spot, because men are not bad, and women are not weak. Who said that? This is a video about how we harass women. <laughs> this is a video about how you should probably stop. You see, Ralph was a homosexual. Which itself is just recycled anti-black propaganda. <laughs> I'm just keeping that in because it's funny. <laughs> Most feminists would take anti-male propaganda and interpret it as anti-female propaganda. But I've got to say, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> this is incredible. It's like watching someone make taffy. Watch out, they're coming for your precious women and children. <laughs> See what I mean? When, oh when, are we finally going to stop treating women like they're less precious than men? I'm a herpy, herpy slip group. The full acronym is LGBTQQIP2SAA. If you can keep track of all of the houses in Game of Thrones, you can learn what this means. Okay, I don't watch Game of Thrones, so I'm not interested in your ever-growing fantasy world either. Bye! You've changed your language to be more acceptable many times without issue. It's the reason we don't say m or retard anymore. I do. Maybe because I'm not a retarded midget. It's the reason I keep saying black people, not African Americans, because what do you call a black person from France? French! We used to call them Negroes or coloreds and a number of other unacceptable terms. And now we call them people of color. And we'll change it again in the next few years. To be honest, we just like changing the names of things back and forth forever. So there's always someone in the room we can bully around for not being hip to our jinko. I mean lingo. You've changed your language for these other groups, so it shouldn't be that hard for you to do it for trans people. So it shouldn't be legally enforced then? No? And there is a mental illness known as gender dysphoria. But not every trans person experiences dysphoria, because a main component is that you feel significant distress or impairment. Oh, it's weird, isn't it, right? Some people just decide one day with no distress, no impairment, no skin off their nose at all. They just spontaneously choose to join the group that has the power to get people arrested for calling them the wrong name. And that counts too. It's a sacrifice they're somehow willing to make. Fucking queer how that works, isn't it? Trans people exist. They are valid people. Unless you're a particular kind of feminist. Namely a turf. So remember, folks, you can hate on trans people and still call yourself a feminist. And as we know, feminist is simply a person who believes in gender equality. Nothing more. Since TERF includes feminism, this must include TERFs. Feminism. Letting transphobes call themselves equal rights activists since God knows when. But we don't do that. It was not us. It was trans those trans exclusionary... Radical meninists that everyone's heard of. That's who does that. This is so not a what about us and not in this context. Oh, life, you're so convenient when it suits me. Praise the Jeebus. So whenever I hear that some poor white girl lost a medal to a trans woman, what I really hear is... It was a black girl. Athletics is one of the things in which black people seem to excel. <laughs> but never mind, eh? Olaf here! skips right over the gender dysphoria and she's in the mood for a dust-up. What could possibly go wrong? They took our jobs! Do I feel bad for her? Sure, kinda. In the same way that I feel bad for a white person who doesn't get a job because of affirmative action.
I, I suppose it's just awfully convenient that there aren't any men to feel sorry for in this scenario. The, the male athletes are chugging along as normal like nothing's changed, while the women are falling into obscurity, especially the minority ones. But hey, who ever said this was about practice? The theory is right. We're absolutely sure. I've been that white person. Oh, but you're, you're over it now, are you? <laughs> now you know better. <laughs> and while I was bitter at the time and even wrote a paper about how affirmative action is reverse racism and should be abolished. Dude, again, if, if you're still using the term reverse racism, like it's not a definitively racist thing to say, then you have still not snapped out of it. Not even close. If you believe in a world that is strictly a one-way street, and you, are, you are quite free to believe that. Your heart's content. But when you think you can get away with calling it equality in the presence of people who live in the third dimension, then you are going to get some sideways glances. Okay, I know, I know you think women have it worse and black people have it worse. But whatever, whatever the situation may be, fixing it, fixing it does not require you to strip down your model of society to literally one goddamn dimension and one goddamn direction. Okay? No problem. Makes it necessary to do that. On the contrary, thinking exclusively in one dimension will make you fucking abysmal at solving problems. It's not possible to solve problems in one dimension. Because you will never get anything past anything else. You will just be pushing a ghost train forever up a hill. Like Richard Branson meeting Sisyphus in the afterlife. You are so fucking stupid. All right, no more. I've surprised myself to have made it this far. But yeah, it's been a while since I dished up a long sausage for you. I figured you probably deserve... You, you, you deserve yourselves a Cumberland. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'm fucking knackered. Bollocks to your bollocks to someone. Thanks, folks. It's good to be back. It's good to be back in the land of YouTube where you can see and hear things. Spare a thought for the people who live every day inside that neglected birdcage we call Twitter. And it's the most exciting thing they'll ever experience. Fret not. Those who dine on scraps tonight, in hell, they feed on the bones you toss. See you later. Three. Three.